I've been working lately with um, Photoshop Elements and this is, I'm sorry, hold on one second, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a really bad cold. This is um, a file that I brought in from the website is at isaboutyou.yolasite.com um, and on that website if you go under the mats there's some frames in there and this is one of the ones that's posted. Um, so I brought that into my um, Photoshop Elements as a PDF. I also brought it in to my Pazzles Inspiration Studio and this is going to be a print and cut file. So with this one here what I'm going to do is remove the color and it needs some outline color. I right clicked on it and I'm going to take this off the mat and just put this aside. We're not ready for it yet but it's ready when when we need it. So I'm going to go back to my Photoshop elements and <clears throat> what I found is that there's all these bevels over here so if you go to edit uh, let me get out of it so I can show you what it would look like. So if you go to edit there's different effects that come up like if you this drops down box um, there's lots of different things that you can do with these plain ordinary files that we have for example um, let's try this one you just drag it over plop it in and it gives it an entirely different look so I undo that one let's try the green one just gives it a different look. Um, that was glass buttons. Let's see what else there is. Image effects. Um, try this one. See what happens. It's just nothing fancy so I'll undo that. This one looks like it has some kind of a shadow to it. Yeah, it's okay. So what it is, it's just the squares, and I had the red over here, so that's why it came up like this. So I'll undo that. This looks interesting. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Um, but those are image effects, inner glows. There's different things you can do, and it just. Anyhow, you can keep playing with these and playing with these. And this one is called Wow Chrome. Okay, so you get like a chrome effect. I'm not sure if you can color this or not. I'm curious. No, but let me try something different here because I'm still experimenting. Let me color it first. Oh, I still have that other bevel thing on there. Make sure that I'm way back to the beginning. Now let's try it. Okay, so I have this. And what happens if you put this on top of that? No, it still does the same thing. I was just curious because, like I said, I'm still experimenting. But I'm going to go back up to where the bevels are. And I like this one. It's called Wacky Metallic. And look what happens when you put this in here. Whatever color you have in here, it gives a wacky metallic look. And I just think that looks so cool. I'm really happy with that. Um, let's try a different one. See, it gives it like the edges are beveled there. Let me bring it up closer so that you can see. Yeah, see, can you see that in there? So that's cool. Um, we can bring this one in gives it a different look. Undo. This one will give it a shadow. But I like this one. In fact, I think I'm going to change the color first. And I want to show you how to do that too. So I'm going to click on the red. And that's what's showing on top. And I want to kind of get this to look more like a regular frame. So I'm going to go down to where the oranges are and get something like a gold. Hit OK. And then there's a little arrow that goes both ways. What it says, like flip-flop. So I'm going to click on the white now and go back down to the gold and give it like two different shades. So I'll, I'll click on that one. We'll see what happens. And just experiment. So I have my paint bucket. I'm going to spill it in. 
and then I'm going to go back over here to the wacky metallic one and I like that so let me go back out and fit on screen and I want to save it that way so what I need to do is save it I'm going to hit save as and I've tried doing it as a PDF in um, puzzles, and for some reason it won't let me do it. I don't know why, but it won't let me do it. And I keep looking to see if there's something else on here that I'm missing. Um, even the PNG, it just, for some reason, I don't see AI. They always talk about AI, but I don't see it on here. So if somebody else knows how to do that, please let me know, because I'd like to make my life a little bit easier. Let me try EPS. Maybe we'll learn this together. Okay, it's saved under the folder AJ. Um, right up frame copy, save. So let me go in my puzzle. So it's merging layers. Make sure that goes through first. Okay, files of vector will be rastered. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I feel so bad being sniffly with you. And my computer has been dragging lately. Let me go Hazel's Inspiration and import, oops, export, import. Let's try EPS and see what happens. And I want to look. I have it saved on a flash drive. And it's under the file AJ. These are all my weekly um, my weekly files I put on the website. Rod iron. And I am not even seeing it in here. And yet I know that that's where I saved it at. Is that strange or what? Maybe I thought I put it in there and I didn't and it's down here someplace? Now oh, see this is what I've been running into. I don't know what there is about that so let me go back and I'm going to save it again. Save as. It's under AJ. Did I look under AJ before AG? Let me go back there for a second. That was AJ. Oh, here it is, right there. I might have hit AG. Now I've got two PDFs, and I'm not sure which one it is. It looks like it might be this one. Let's try it. See it comes in black. That's not the one. That's the one I had on the website. Uh, all files. Let's see if I can find it this way. There it is. Has a JPEG though. That's from the one I did before. It's not even the right color when I was practicing making this. Oh, there it is. The picture's not showing. EPS. Let's see what happens. and it's timing my whole system out and nothing happens when I try to open it that way so like I said I'm going to go in here and I'm going to save it as a JPEG for some reason that seems to work I hit save hit OK I already have the resolution at 300 so that when I go to print it it'll be clear So you're learning right along with me. And in case you're wondering what these squares are in the background, for those of you who don't know, it means the transparency. Um, there's no white paper behind it. Like if you're going to use this in another outlet, that's my oven going off. You can hear the timer. Um, but when you bring it into the puzzles inspiration, the white paper is going to be there anyway. So, okay, AJ. This is, right now it says um, Fisher puzzles. So what I'm going to do is hit all files, go all the way down to the W's find it hopefully there it is 
Okay, so I'm going to click on that, open, and there it is. So the reason I have this one is because I need to place this on top of this so that we can cut it out. So I'm going to bring it closer, and I know I'm going to have to fit this on an 8 by 8.5 um, by 11 printer for most of you, so I'm just going to hit Control A, and I'm going to shrink this down pretty much so that I know that it's going to fit. And I'm put that, that more in the center there. So I'm going to hit this one, go to Justify, and I'm going to hit this big box for center, and I'm going to hit this one, and I'm going to make sure that I hit center, and I'm going to clear this because of the shadow on there, and then I'm going to go back to my arrow key, and I, I already have it clicked on, so I'm just going to hit to the front, so I know it's in the front, and then I'm going to enlarge the outline using this little slider down here. See, so it's too big right now, I understand, but I just wanted you to see that it is on top. So we need to backscale that. Let me put a zero in front of that one and see what happens. That's better. Um, what I like to do is use the um, color, um, get color from the screen with the eyedropper, and I usually try to get like one of these colors that's close to the edge. Add it to the palette. There it is. And so now I need to left click on that. And if we go in close, I have a feeling it went to the back again. It's been doing that to me. Oh no, it's there, I think. Let me try enlarging it just slightly more. Yep, there it is. Okay, I don't need it that big. Oop. So you have to play with the slider bar to get it where you want it to be. I'll try it too. Yeah, I like the two. And the reason that I make it a little bit thicker is so that in case your cutter is off slightly, you're not going to get this white outline. Instead, you're going to get that color line. I'm going to try it even as a three. Yeah, I think I like that better. So that'll be um, 0 0.03. So let me get back out. And you can see that we now have a cutting file. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, I was trying to box it in. Somehow I grabbed it. So I'm going to group this and bring it down here. And now I need to make another box around this. So I'm going to make my box um, black. I have it clicked on it. Get off of there. Um, black. So I'm going to make a box. And I'm going to thicken that so you can see it better. And I'm going to make that black. I'm going to right click on the black. Okay, and there's a reason for that. Um, when I go to print preview, blacks, there it is. Okay, this is what, what, when you go to print it, this is what's going to come out of your printer. And what you'll do is take that piece of paper that comes out of your printer, I would prefer you did it on cardstock, it'll work better, and you have to cut on that black line exactly. I mean, you can't be sloppy with it. It's very important that you cut the black line exactly. Okay, so now I'm going to close this out. And if you have a wide format printer, then you'd be able to do... Um, the, the, you, I mean, you can make this as large as you want. With the smaller format printer, you have to make it small enough to fit into the printer. So now what you'll do is get, I, I like to work on my 12 by 12. For me, it's just so much easier. You're going to place a piece of paper around here someplace. I'm just going to put um, a rectangle here just for um, visual understanding, okay? And I'll make that one green. I'm going to thicken the line just so you can see it. You don't have to do that, but just I just want you to be able to see it. The green is representing my piece of paper. In fact, I think I'll color it in, and I'm going to send it to the back. Now, I would normally do this. Um, it, I mean, it could be any kind of um, scrap cardstock for that one. The good cardstock is what you need to use when you print it out. This piece here, the green one, um, it really doesn't matter what kind of cardstock you're using. Okay, so you're going to put this on the printer, the green card stock, and what you're going to do is cut out only the black line. I know, because I don't have it turned on, I'm not hooked up. So here's the black line. This is what you would cut out on the gr out of the green card stock on your printer. Once you cut this out, you are not going to take the mat out of the cutter. You are not going to take the paper off of the mat. Leave the, leave the paper on the mat, leave the mat in the cutter. But you will take this piece out. And when you do, the other one that you cut 
is going to fit in there exactly. And that's what you're going to see. And that is what you'll cut next after you put that piece of paper in to take the place of the one you took off of the mat. Then you would cut this and you should have a perfect cut when you cut this out so that uh, I didn't want to cut that, I want to hit return. So that all you'll see is this image right here without any of the white, without any of the green or anything else. That's all you're going to see. And it's going to be delicate, so be very careful taking it off the mat. But this is something that you can do to interplay the Pazzles Inspiration Studio and the Photoshop elements. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. This is Vicki Key signing off. Bye.